Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now this week's video is about, uh, is about a, an iconic developer that I've used uh, for years now and about a camera that I've used for a, a couple of years. Now the camera in question is this, it's a Lomo LCA 120. You've seen it before, I've done some videos about this camera. I've even had an article in the Lom Lomography magazine about it. Uh, it's a camera that takes some great images, 6x6 medium format images and the meter on this camera is absolutely spot on. It never seems to get the exposures wrong. Now, what I'm going to do, because of that, I'm going to try to use this camera in low light. It's supposed to be very good in low light situations, but I'm going to take it one step further and, and try and use this camera at night and see what uh, pictures I can come up with and see how this exposure meter works. Now, for me to use the camera, I'm going to have to put a film in with a high ISO and then develop it in a developer that's going to give me uh, not much increase in grain, uh, it's going to give me good shadow detail and it's going to be high, it's going to give me highlights that are not blown. And the developer of choice for that is Diafine. Diafine is a two part compensating developer. You can develop most films in it and most films have a speed increase. Some films don't, T-Max uh, 3200, you have to lower it uh, with Diafine, but most films you get a speed increase. Now I'm going to use Kodak 400TX and I'm going to uh, uh, rate it at 1600 ISO and hopefully that will give me um, a shutter speed that I can handhold the LCA 120. Diafine came to being uh, years ago uh, primarily for uh, the professional photographer, say a press photographer, who uh, was covering football matches, rugby ma matches, Olympics etc, where the light depended on his shutter speed to keep it high. So during the day he's probably alright at 400 ISO, uh, fast lens, but as the day went on the light gets dimmer and it gets to a stage where the spotlights might have to come on. So uh, Diafine was great because you could uprate the film as the light uh, levels dropped and then develop it in Diafine for the same time. Uh, so it wasn't uh, like push processing where you would uh, intentionally underexpose by increasing the ISO and then overdevelop. That in turn would give you a higher grain, bigger grain clumps and it would also give you shadows that are not, all, that are not always open. So it was an alternative that worked. Uh, Diafine also is a film that you can put different film stocks in the same tank for the same time. So it didn't matter what film you're using, what rating you gave it, you always developed it for the same time in Diafine Part A and Part B. So it revolutionised uh, photography, especially uh, sports photography. As the years went by, it got more commercialised and uh, uh, Diafine uh, is a developer that you, it's harder to get these days. I had to buy this from Germany. It cost me, uh, I think this cost me about 70 euros. It'll probably be more now, especially with the uh, import duties, etc. Now that we're out of the EU. But uh, uh, I bought that. But the thing is with Diafine, um, it lasts forever. Now, when you buy it, it mixes up to a, a one US gallon. And as you can see, the, the development, uh, when I, sorry, when I mix the developer, it was done on the 17th of the 11th, 2019, and this developer is still working perfectly. In fact, develop, uh, Diafine can be left for years. Uh, it can even form a scum at the top of the uh, top of the developer. Uh, if you if you uh, filter that off, Diafine will still work. So it's a very very uh, reliable and consistent developer to, to use. Now the way that I'm going to uh, work with it. And this is how I use Diafine. When you, when you buy it, it comes in uh, sachets or in uh, tubs, the marmarine tubs. Um, uh, separate tubs in powder. You mix up part A and part B. Important to remember that n never get any part B into part A. Even if it's a minute amount, it'll stop the air from working. So just be careful of that. Mix them up and we're, you're ready to go. Now how I work it, um, with all films, it doesn't matter where it's Fuji across, Kodak, Triax, Ilpa, FB4, it doesn't matter. I use the recommended ISO settings on the box and uh, once I've taken the pictures, I put the 
the, uh, the the negatives into the tank. Now, as I said, it could be uh, negatives shot on Ilford FP4 and then some on Triax. It doesn't matter. You can develop them in the same tank. So put them in the tank. Pour in uh, part A. Now, what I do, I keep it there for four minutes. And I agitate five times every minute. Some people don't do that. I do and I t tend to come up with some good results. I don't pre-sort the film. I don't see any advantage of that unless you're doing stand development. Uh, but uh, once the four minutes is up on part A, pour that out into the container because you're going to reuse it. Then pour part B in, give it the exactly the same uh, time. Pour that out. Uh, use a water, water bath to stop the development and then fix it in either an acid or an alkaline fixer and then you're done. The temperature is not dependent exactly. Most black and white films are 20 degrees centigrade. You can develop this anywhere from 21 degrees centigrade to 85. So you've not to worry about the, uh, the, the temperature all the time really. It just works. And how it works, when you pour in part A, it, it soaks. It's the developer but it's not working, it's not active. It soaks into the negative, gets well soaked in. And then after the four minutes that I use, I pour it out and pour in part B, which is the activator, and that actually develops the film. And you find, because it's a compensating developer, the way that you work it, that you rarely get blown out highlights. The negative, uh, the developer exhausts itself in the brighter highlights, so it's great for that. So all in all, it's a fantastic developer, and it's one that you really, if you haven't used it, must try. Uh, the downside to it, uh, to a diaphine is obviously the cost but as I say you soon get that back because once you bought it you won't want to buy any anymore for years uh, but the other thing is you, you have no real control of contrast um, if you want a higher contrast negative or a lower contrast negative you can't really do it uh, successfully with diaphine because the times are exactly the same now if we look at this pi this picture because it's not entirely true what I said if you look at this picture this was a Kodak 320 sheet film Tri-X and this was rated at 320 ISO and it was on a really really dull day and then I took another another picture on the same type of film and rated it at 1000 ISO did exactly the same development and as you can see side by side there's very very little difference we've got well controlled highlights as you can see we've got decent shadow detail and the grain size is kept to a minimum. So for them reasons, uh, it's a way better developer to use uh, than, than push pro processing a film. Where when you do that, you increase development times, you have to keep an eye on your temperature, you end up with a, a bigger grain granules, uh, clumped up more, um, with higher contrast, often with blacks uh, or darker areas, no shadow detail. Diaphine comes in into its own uh, when you're uprating uh, films. The films that it's more suited to do, suited to is uh, Tri-X. They say it's a, a marriage born in heaven, Diaphine and Tri-X. It w works really, really well. Um, and that's rated Tri-X at 1600 ISO for the 400 TX film. I found it also works exceptionally well for um, Fuji Across. Although with that one, you're better uh, developing part A and part B for five minutes for some reason but it produces some really really nice pictures so it's a developer that if you've not tried or you thought about it see if you can source it buy it yes it's going to cost you a bob or two but keep in mind you never have to buy any again and it might be the developer that uh, you use all the time it's certainly a develop developer that I've used uh, for many years now so so we'll uh, get the low mode loaded with 400 TX Tri-X rate it at 1600 ISO, go out at night, just use the automatic meter, uh, see what that comes up with and develop it in diaphine and hopefully we should get some good usable uh, negatives.
right, I hope you enjoyed those pictures that I took. And uh, what can I, uh, or what can we learn from this? Well, two things. Firstly, that the Lomo LCA 120 light meter works exceptionally well at night. Now, believe me, the footage that you saw on the GoPro made everything look a lot brighter than what it really was. So it's done very, very, very well. Some of the interior shots, some of the cafes, etc., I, uh, I photographed, they, they came out absolutely spot on. So I, there's no complaints there. Um, I don't know what the shutter speeds or the apertures were when I was taking the pictures. I would think the apertures would have been nearly wide open on it and the shutter speeds would have been really low. But because it's a wide angle lens, and this applies to a 35mm as well as medium format, you can handhold the cameras um, at slower speeds without getting camera shake. So I think that's applied, that, that rule's applied with this, and, and a lot of the pictures turned out quite sharp. So I was pleased with that. Uh, so that's one thing I've learned, I can go out with a Lomo in very low light and, uh, and still get some pictures. Now, as regards Diaphine, uh, it's worked, um, I think, as I expected it to do. Uh, we're getting these open shadows, these beautifully controlled highlights. Uh, Diaphine very rarely blows the highlights. And we just get a nice tonal range, other than you do lose this mid-tone separation using Diaphine. And I think Diaphine really um, comes into its own these days if you, uh, you have a scanning workflow and editing your pictures in uh, uh, Photoshop, etc., where you can get that mid-tone se separation and that contrast back. It does produce negatives that are, are, are quite flat, and uh, it doesn't, ma doesn't matter what the lighting is, they're, they're sometimes quite flat. And if you're working in a dark room with an enlarger, then you do struggle sometimes to get that contrast up. It's one of the best films I know that I've used for scanning. And uh, I love scanning my 4x5 negatives uh, that have been developed in Diaphine. So, yeah, it's worked really, really well. Um, the other thing I'd say about Diaphine is the uh, actual agitation. I just want to go over that a little bit more. Uh, I agitated for 5 every minute for 4 minutes for A and B. Now, I did that... Uh, because I've done it before, when I've gone out at night, I think it just does help to build that contrast a little bit more. Not a lot, but it does help. But if I was out with, uh, say, Tri-X, even rated at 1600 ISO on a bright day, uh, you'd probably have to put an ND filter on your camera, just keep the shutter speeds down. But in that case, I would probably ag agitate less. Um, probably one agitation, f sorry, five agitations uh, at the beginning and then just one in the middle and that will be the same for part A and part B. And I think in bright bright conditions it, it does help. So that's worth trying but it's well worth just experimenting. You'll always get a picture using uh, Diaphine so don't worry about that. And, and as I say because you're reusing it uh, you're not wasting money so it's well worth uh, trying different uh, different ways to agitate to develop it. All right, one other uh, thing I wanted to mention, I've forgotten. Uh, if you find it difficult to get hold of the original Diaphine, there is an alternative. And it can be bought from a company in the UK called Nick and Trick. I'll leave a link to their website in the description. And it's, uh, it, it's a developer that's uh, in liquid form. It's a copy, but in liquid form, of Diaphine. And it's called Bellini Photo DF2 Duo Stop. Uh, they say it's very, very good. I've never tried it, so I don't know, but uh, if you are struggling, it, it is an alternative. If you want to find out more, give uh, Nick or Trick uh, a ring. They're very approachable, and they will uh, tell you a little bit more about it. Right, we'll move on. Right, it's uh, a big, big thank you time to everybody that has contributed to my YouTube channel over the last three and a half years. I, uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, everybody that's subscribed to my channel, that's given me thumbs up, likes, those people that uh, comment, uh, people that send uh, donations, people that have bought my uh, prints that I've put on YouTube, a big, big thank you. It helps me to keep carrying on. It gives me that enthusiasm. I started this channel, I think it was March 2020, properly, and uh, it was just a bit of a, a hobby, something to do, uh, because I think we're in lockdown 
but the more I did it, the more I enjoyed it, the more feedback I got, I carried on to, uh, it inspired me to carry on and make more videos. I'm uh, At the moment, I'm over 11,000 subscribers. I'm about, I think I've checked today, 7,000 uh, off a million uh, views on my YouTube channel. Uh, so, big, big thank you. And I'm going to continue, as long as I can, as long as my body allows me to do it, making videos uh, for you people to watch and share the wonders of uh, film photography. Now, as I say, it's this time of year, uh, a week today, it'll be Christmas Day. And uh, I'd like to wish everybody, everybody in the world, uh, and keep in mind those that really can't celebrate Christmas, but I'd like to wish everybody a very, very happy Christmas and uh, wish you all the best in uh, 2024. So if you like this video please give me a thumbs up, a like. Better still subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions leave them below and I'll get back to you. As I always say, stay safe and I will see you all in 2024.